What does your hair, skin, nails, a rhino's horn, and an insect's exoskeleton all have in common? Well, they're all made of proteins, and in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to know for AQA A-Level Biology Proteins. AQA A-Level Biology Protein. So some key terms to kick off the lesson. First of all, an amino acid is the basic monomer of a protein. Polypeptides are a long chain of amino acids joined by peptide bonds. An amino group is the NH2 region of an amino acid, and I'll take you through that in a moment. The carboxyl group is the CWH group made up of a carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen. The variable R group is what changes from one amino acid to the other but the rest of the amino acid follows the same general structure. A peptide bond is a bond formed between two amino acids. It's where the OH from the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the hydrogen from the amino or NH2 group of another amino acid join. And I'll show you what that looks like with a diagram soon. Now a condensation reaction is the removal of water to form a bond. And this is the reaction used to form peptide bonds. Hydrolysis is breaking a bond using water. Polymerization is the formation of a polymer from monomers. The primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures are the four levels of protein structure. Collagen is a fibrous protein that has a structural role. Globular proteins carry out metabolic functions, and these include things like enzymes such as amylase, but molecules such as haemoglobin are also globular proteins. A dipeptide, well, di means two. So a dipeptide is two amino acids joined by a peptide bond. A disulfide bond is a strong covalent bond, which will be between the sulfur, and this is usually from the amino acid cysteine. A hydrogen bond is a weak bond, but in large enough numbers, they can be quite strong, but individually they are weak. Ionic bonds, they're weak and broken by changes in pH, and they're attractions between positive and negative charges and particles. Now, this is going to show you the general structure of an amino acid, and we can see in the middle, we have the carbon there, and we have our amino group on the left, our carboxyl group on the right. So let's label that up. So we've got our amino group on the left, which is NH2, one nitrogen and two hydrogens. Now remember, hydrogen can form one bond, nitrogen can form three. And then we've got our variable R group. That changes depending on the amino acid. Then we've got the carboxyl group, which is one carbon, a double bonded oxygen and an OH. Now amino acid structure varies depending upon the amino acid. So glycine is the most simple of the 20 that we need, and it's only got a hydrogen for its variable R group. Whereas alanine, that's got a CH3, so it's got like a methyl group attached to it. Cysteine has got that sulfur that we were talking about that can get involved in disulfide bonds in the tertiary structure of a protein. Now, for AQAA level biology, you don't necessarily need to memorize the structure of amino acids, but it's helpful for you to have been introduced to them, but you do need to know the general structure. So this is a condensation reaction showing two amino acids forming a peptide bond. So we can see our first amino acid at the top left. We can see it's amino group here, which is NH2. And we can see on the right, it's carboxyl group ready to bind with the amino group of the right amino acid. So what's going to happen is basically, if I just grab my pen, the oxygen and the hydrogen from the amino acid on the left is going to get removed. And so is the hydrogen from the amino acid on the right. So we can see here that water gets removed. Well, what's that going to leave behind? Well, that's going to leave nitrogen, which normally has three bonds. So one, two, and then the third to the hydrogen. So we're going to have a, a third bond spare here once we remove that hydrogen. Carbon can form four bonds. So it's going to have one there, two there, and then we're going to have an extra one going to the nitrogen here. So this is going to form our dipeptide, as we can see, and we're going to have the formation of a peptide bond via this condensation reaction. So 
the OH of the first amino acid's carboxyl group and the H of the second amino acid's amino group will be involved. Water is released. And the reverse of this reaction, so if we add water in and break the bond, that will be known as hydrolysis. Now, two amino acids joined with a peptide bond make a dipeptide. So hydrolysis reactions next. Well, you can see here we've got a dipeptide at the top. And we can see that, that peptide bond here. Well, when water is added in, that's going to break the peptide bond. And we're going to stick a hydrogen onto the amino group of the right amino acid. And we're going to stick an OH on to the carbon of the left amino acid. Okay. So that is the hydrolysis reaction. So to summarize, hydrolysis is where a peptide bond between two amino acids is broken. Water is added. A dipeptide goes to two amino acids. Next of all, we have the four levels of protein structure. You need to know about this for the AQA A-level biology exam. So first of all, number one, we have the primary protein structure. Now this is the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide. And you can just see this long chain of amino acids here joined up with peptide bonds. And it's always going to be the NH2 group of the right amino acid joining up to the carboxyl group of the left amino acid. Then we have the secondary structure. So this is part two here. Now the secondary structure is the alpha helix or the beta pleated sheet. And what you can see is the beta pleated sheet is kind of kinked or bent and that's because of hydrogen bonds. And the alpha helix is coiled and that's because of hydrogen bonds too. So this is where we have a little bit of folding going on. Now the tertiary structure is where we have a 3D shape resulting from further bonding and that includes hydrogen bonds, it includes ionic bonds, and it includes disulfide bonds between the amino acid cysteine because that contains sulfur in its variable region. Now, finally, we have the quaternary structure, and that's when we have more than one polypeptide chain chemically bonded. And examples of this include hemoglobin, which has four polypeptide chains, and collagen. Testing for proteins next. The Burette test or the Bioret test is the test for proteins and it indicates the presence of peptide bonds. Now you basically just add Bioret solution to your sample and if it changes color to become purple or lilac, that's the positive result for peptide bonds. Now, basically the Burette solution is sodium hydroxide plus dilute copper sulfate. Now a negative result will be if the solution does not change color and it in fact remains blue. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe guys, and I will see you in the next one.